It's good. good. I'm uh, I'm actually in the frame this time. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, who is Errol? This is Errol. <laughs> Toby. Hey. Okay, so last week we promised our viewers that we were going to get some in-flight footage. Oh yes, yes. And we did. And we did, yeah. yeah. And it looks really cool. And we were lucky because the day was was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, really nice day. Clouds were in the valleys, it was foggy. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, we'll show you a bit of that footage and I guess today's episode is going to be mainly about loss procedures. Yep. Um, okay, so tell us a little bit about loss procedures. What are they? Yeah, so loss procedure is um, uh, a procedure we go through if we're lost, as the name suggests, but it, it's mostly to do with our dead reckoning practice. So when we get a, a compass heading and a yeah. time and we go out somewhere like west where there's sort of featureless terrain yep. to be, um, yeah, if you don't do the dead west reckoning, of the Gold Coast, west probably. of the Gold Coast, um, if we don't do that dead reckoning properly, um, you could end up in a situation where you don't know exactly where you are. So um, we, you know, it shouldn't should never happen, but um, we simulate uh, times when it, when it could happen, and we go through yep. a little bit of a procedure to to help us find where we are. And I guess it's uh, it's an interesting thing to think about because these these days, I mean, we rely on technology for everything. Yeah. We have GPS on our phone, we have GPS in the aircraft, we have a GPS on our iPad. It's yeah. just, it, it, it's fairly difficult to find ourselves in a situation where we are genuinely lost. Definitely, yeah, yeah. But going back to the roots of aviation, where back many, many years ago, where we didn't have this sort of technology, yeah. uh, this is how it's done. And in a situation uh, where all of our technology has failed, it's still very relevant as it always was from yeah. day one. So, Tenterfield. Yeah. We went out to Tenterfield and um, we realised that we couldn't conduct a... No, we couldn't cut the, the prex surge today because it was uh, yeah, covered in fog on such a beautiful day. Covered in fog and it was literally over the aerodrome. Have a look at the footage. Yeah. Um, November. Oh, that's so annoying. How annoying is that? Just over it. Right, clear, thanks. Kill the cloud. Go away, cloud. To conduct a loss procedure, you always need to have a starting point where you know that could be the aerodrome you take off from, you know that at a certain time you've um, departed that airfield. In this case, we departed Tenterfield, so I had a time for when we left there. Yep. So if you have a heading in time, you can do your dead reckoning and um, estimate where you will be uh, Yeah, from, from that heading time. Totally. And we simply trust the maths here. Um, we look at our ground speed. We're flying at around, I believe on the day it was approximately um, two nautical miles per minute. It was about 120 knots that we were doing. Um, and that's all you did, right? Just yep. looked at the time. Okay, I, I travelled this heading for this amount of time, therefore I should be this far. Yep. So we're flying a specific heading for a certain amount of time. Yep. And 30 minutes we did this for. Yep. And I was so sure that you were lost. So we're probably already over Sandy Flat. But you did say one thing, um, and I was really impressed. As I was telling you that we were about to finish, you said, okay, we've traveled for this amount of time. We've, we've sort of gone in these headings. You drew it on your map, yeah. rough direction of where we would have gone yeah. by getting your ruler out. And uh, you said, Errol, while you were under hood, we should be crossing a road right now. We should have crossed uh, a big road, riv uh, road with a, some big power lines across it. I looked outside and there was a road. <laughs> it was that road that you, were, that you were referring to, which I thought was great. What about when I told you to take the hood off? Uh, what did you do? Talk to, talk to me about exactly what you did. Yeah, so the first thing um, that I did was finish up my, my estimates. Toby One Kenobi. Yo, yo. Toby One Kenobi, tell us, where are we? I do not know quite yet. All right, four, All seven. Right. Um, I'm going to take off my hood, yeah? Okay, take off the hood. All right. Thumbs bad hair day. Still looks lovely, Ooh. kind of. <laughs> so we had been flying, you know, certain headings at certain times, and I just wanted to finish the last heading that we had done. Mm -hmm. So I got a quick sort of end estimate of where I mm -hmm. thought we were. After that, it was I was yeah, looked outside, reduced the power, um, and did a couple of circles just yep. to see what kind of features I could see. So yep. the way uh, I did it was I've been taught you find five, you know, four or five features on the ground. Um, and then you compare them to your map to where you think you are. Uh, and that eliminates the danger of looking at your map to where you are and then trying to associate 
like a road or a, or yeah. a house with what's on the ground. Um, you also yeah. did a, I believe it was about a 10 mile radius. Circle of probability of about 10 miles, so I'll, I'll increase this to about that. When you give your point, you, it's very um, hard to kind of limit yourself to just around there, so it helps you just draw an area mm -hmm. probability where you, you've got to be basically inside that. Mm -hmm. It helps to, uh, yeah, when, you, when you're looking for features just to look within that area. And if you can't find yourself in that area, then you can look further. Yep. Yeah. So that's a, that's a big town with a road that runs east to west. With a bit of a curve. Uh, and a bit of curve in the middle, and uh, north of that is a town, and uh, certainly that is a town. Okay, okay we've got mountain ranges up north. I'll see you. Uh, that should be enough. My area of probability because we're in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so <laughs> north we've got a ridge, south we've got a ridge. Uh, we've got a town with a mine on it. I'm not sure if that's the one. I'll have a look to see. Uh, feel free to track down there to have a look if you need. Ah, uh, oh, there is. I see it. There's the mine. On the map, okay. we're here. Okay. Yep. And we're just going to head over it right now. Have it right there? Yep, okay. right over there. And you can see that we should have a road that runs north of that to another town, which is what uh, we originally saw. We're not lost anymore. Fantastic. Yeah. Good job. And that's it. Symbols. What's on the plan for next week? I don't know. You're, you're the boss. You tell me. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we'll figure it out. out. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thanks again for tuning in, um, guys and girls. And please, if you can, share it. Uh, we, we, we both really love aviation and we just want to share our passion for it. And um, hopefully, save some lives and help people out in the process and uh, yeah, help people out that are going through training as well, more, more important than anything else. Yeah, and also just, yeah, people who haven't started training want to see a little bit what it's kind of about. And this is some of the things what they're that, up we, for. Yeah, that we do in my training. Cool, thanks, see ya. See ya.